Have you ever wanted to be a software engineer? You picture the huge six-figure salary, the remote work, the free lunches, the whole dream job in tech company fantasy. Well, listen up. My name is Amon. I landed six high-paying software engineering internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP, and scored multiple six-figure full-time offers right out of college. I lived that software engineering dream job life, and then I walked away from it all. Today, I'm giving you the brutally honest truth about why software engineering is no longer the dream job you think it is. I'm breaking down the harsh reality of the job market, the devastating psychological cost of the hiring process, and the ultimate lie of the six-figure salary. This video will save you years of wasted time and effort. Let's get into it. Okay, you're smart. You've completed the foundational computer science classes, dedicated yourself to learning languages like Python, and diligently built projects. So why are you still struggling to land that critical first interview? What the hell is going on? The essential reality is that software engineering is no longer the dream job it once was, and the first most fundamental reason for this is the complete inversion of the job market. To understand why it's so difficult right now, we must first reflect on history. It used to be easy to get a job. The market was a technological gold rush, and if you possessed coding skills, you were often hired instantly. Excellent programmers were seen as rare wizards or rock stars, leading companies to treat engineers extremely well. Hell, in the 90s, you could walk across the street and negotiate two or three times your initial salary from a competitor. This was an era defined by high demand and low supply. But that golden age is over. The market is completely inverted and is defined now by massive supply and shockingly low demand. The supply of talent is immense. US US college students majoring in computer science jump nearly 40% in five years, and more than 100,000 students graduate annually with a computer science degree. And currently, over 600,000 students are actively enrolled in computer science related fields in this academic year alone. The demand for these roles, however, has been crushed by volatility, mass layoffs, and the rapid adoption of AI. The competition is fierce. In the competitive landscape of 2025, over 65,000 tech employees have already been laid off in the US, with notable cuts from giant like Microsoft, 6,000, and IBM, 8,000. This means that thousands of seasoned professionals, some with 10, 20, or even 30 years of experience, are now flooding the applicant pool, competing directly with new graduates. Adding to this pressure is the accelerating adoption of AI. While AI is estimated to replace 1.8 million jobs globally this year, because AI is a factor now, this environment increases the technical complexity and skills required for entry-level roles. The harsh result is simple. The bar for entry has shot through the roof. It used to be easy to get a job, but now it's not. Landing a technical job today requires roughly 10 times the effort compared to job seekers 5 or 10 years ago. The sheer volume of effort required is staggering. Job seekers in 2025 submitted an average of 300 applications to secure a single job offer. And for highly competitive roles, data indicates that software engineers with less than two years of experience required an average of over 1,400 applications just to receive one offer. And the accepted standard for these entry-level positions is so high that the average student now needs four, five, even six software engineer internships just to be seriously considered. Look, the reality is simple. This brutal market dynamic where securing a single offer may require enduring hundreds or even thousands of rejections takes a tremendous psychological toll on every single candidate. And you must understand that the job acquisition process today feels like navigating a war zone, and most people are simply not built for that level of constant failure. You need to prepare yourself for the painful reality that you will be rejected hundreds, if not thousands of times. You will be ghosted, you'll receive boilerplate rejection emails with zero explanation. Some candidates may even get all the way to the finish line only to have their job offer rescinded or laid off within the first week. This relentless failure pushes you to a constant state of high anxiety, and many brilliant students feel the game is rigged when facing repeated rejection. And this tends to create almost a victim mindset. When confronted by a market that demands enormous effort, many people just feel like the game is unfair, saying things like the game is rigged against me or these companies shouldn't expect such high standards. See, back in the day, people believed that success should be easy or deserved just by getting a degree, and that is fundamentally incomplete compatible with the current state of the industry. The thing is that it's incredibly difficult, way more difficult, 10 times more difficult than it used to be. But the only way to thrive and survive in this competitive market is to see the competition and be excited, recognizing that the difficulty confirms the immense value of the prize. But if you can't emotionally separate yourself from this inherent probabilistic process, if you can't handle the feeling of repeatedly failing before walking away with a single offer, you are not cut out for the psychological stress required to succeed in software engineering today. And even if you do somehow get an offer, the next reason why software engineering is no longer a dream job is the reality of working in tech these days. See, you've landed the offer. Now what? 
You walk into the office, grab your first coffee, and expect a checklist of tasks just to get done. But here's where the harsh reality hits. Much of software engineering is about solving challenging problems independently in an unstructured environment. See, school taught you to expect a rubric. It taught you that every problem has one right answer. But work is nothing like that. It's not about working through a linear stack of papers, it's about kicking down doors. You might spend three days coding a solution and then realize the problem you were trying to solve wasn't even a problem, or that your work is irrelevant and you just have to backspace the code and move on. See that reality of just deleting your code you wrote? That's pretty common. In fact, it's normal. But psychologically, it's incredibly draining. Furthermore, you're expecting to figure things out completely on your own. Nobody's helping in these days at these tech companies. You must hold yourself to the standard of not needing to be told what to do because your manager isn't a teacher. They're paying you to figure things out. And this is where the whole there are no stupid questions idea dies. In school, teachers always tell you, oh, there's no stupid questions, just ask them whatever you want. But in the real world, there are absolutely stupid questions. And asking too many will cost you your return offer, your promotion, or your job. And to survive in tech, you must thrive in this uncertain environment where the successful outcome might be proving the project is entirely unnecessary. So if you're the kind of person who needs a strict protocol, step-by-step -step instructions, this lack of structure will crush you. Now, if the work is this hard, this stressful, and this unstructured, surely the massive salary makes up for it, right? Here's the final and perhaps more difficult truth that shows why software engineering is no longer a dream job. That six-figure salary is a complete mirage. First of all, let's talk about what big tech companies pay nowadays. Sure, companies like Google, Apple, Amazon, they still pay $150K to $200,000 as a new grad salary, which, to be honest, is incredible. I mean, you won't find any other field out there that pays that much even today. However, what does that salary actually come attached to it? The truth of this salary is, first of all, it's not actually all salary. A lot of it is equity. So for example, if you make 150 to 200K, very often 30% or even more of your salary is just stock options that vest over several years, so you don't even have access to that. You can't spend it at all to make a better life for yourself. So you might only actually take home 120K while the rest is invested on your behalf with no control over it. And even that $120,000, which roughly translates to $10,000 a month, seems impressive, but usually these big tech companies are in places like San Francisco or New York City, and the taxes are incredible. I mean, you're giving up 30 to 40% of the salary here, just the taxes. So in reality, you're barely taking home maybe $6,000 a month, which again, seems impressive. But if you look at this life that this creates in a big city like SF or New York City, where rent is three to $4,000 a month minimum very often, and then you have expenses like food, travel, lifestyle expenses like that, you're barely saving any money at all. So this is what I talk about when I say that the six figure reality is almost a mirage because a lot of it goes into equity, a lot of it goes to taxes, and then the cost of living in these cities is so high that it's almost impossible to really build a strong financial future for yourself even with this crazy high salary. But other than the six-figure lie that these salaries is, another big mistake people make is believing in the arrival fallacy. The arrival fallacy is simple. It's the simple line that once I get this job, I'll be happy. Once this happens, that will happen. Once A happens, I'll be happy and people do this with almost everything in their life. But the truth of the matter is, I was a freshman in college with no software engineering internships, nothing on my resume, and I was the same level of happiness as I was as a senior with six internships on my resume and multiple six-figure offers on the table. I mean, sure, I will admit that with this level of success on the table, I felt happy for maybe a day or two after getting these offers, but pretty quickly you return to your baseline level of happiness. Life is in a situation where you get a bunch of offers and all of a sudden you're content for the rest of your life. These things tend to come and go and whoever you are as a person, you just return to that base level of happiness. The truth is that these external achievements did not change my fundamental internal state. And the problem is that most people are over-optimizing for these things, financial wealth, while completely sacrificing the things that actually define a fulfilling life. So time wealth, social wealth, physical wealth, and mental wealth. See, getting one of my six-figure offers after my shop Shopify offer was rescinded was genuinely one of the happiest days of my life. I remember calling my parents, all of my friends to tell them the news. But within a year, I wasn't happy again because I didn't enjoy the work, I didn't enjoy the company, and I didn't really enjoy the team. And I didn't really enjoy the day-to-day. -day. So how is it possible that I can go from something being the best day of my life to quitting within a year and being unhappy. What you need to realize is that a job offer is simply a ticket to dedicating 40 to 50 hours of your waking moments to achieving someone else's goal. And yes, it's important to have a job to pay your bills so you can at least survive. But if you think that achieving a job offer in tech 
attack equals your entire life is set, you have to realize that that is the arrival fallacy in action and it's not true at all. If you don't enjoy the journey, you will not enjoy the destination. So here's the honest truth. Software engineering is no longer a dream job for the mediocre, the uncommitted, or the easily discouraged. At this point in the video, I wanna reveal the truth. If you can deal with the rejection, if you're someone who can understand the arrival fallacy, if you're someone who understands that these high cost of living areas mean that your financial situation requires further thought, software engineering can still remain an incredible path for those who are ready to rise to the challenge and master the high leverage hiring process required today. And if you're that person, someone who's done a computer science degree and needs help getting hired, but is exhausted by the constant rejections and the uncertainty, I actually run a program called the Software Engineering Accelerator, where you'll work with me along with seven FANG engineers and recruiters to get a job guaranteed. So if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you land an incredible software engineer job offer fully guaranteed, check out the top link in the description. And if you're struggling with LeetCode, click this video over here where I break down my exact LeetCode strategy I used to master it and land incredible job offers in tech. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.